Hello, hello, and welcome back to Kim Talks Resilience. I'm your host, Kim Hayden, and this is where I am on a journey of finding amazing women to share their stories of resilience. So we're going to share the stories and the insights, inspiration in life, love, and business from women around the world. Today's episode, just so you know, I do want you all to take a moment, check out my store online, queenofresilience.shop. I've got some fun stuff in there, some great t-shirts and some quote bags. And, you know, for all of us uh, women out there just making things happen, there's some, there is some fun, cute stuff. So stop on over at queenofresilience.shop and uh, check it out. You never know. Your next favorite shirt may be in there. So today's guest is Sylvia O'Connor. She has a master's of science degree in admission and served as an adjunct professor at Davenport University in Michigan for five years. As a whistleblower, she won a large financial settlement for exposing financial fraud. After spending 30 years in healthcare, she is now a self-employed motivational speaker who specializes in, dis in discussing the art of moving on. And you know, it's, it's, been an interesting uh, few years here, and I think this Thanksgiving, there's going to be a lot of art of moving on. <laughs> would you agree, Sylvia? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, there's my punny for the day. So, Sylvia, welcome to the show. Super excited you're here. Um, I think what you're discussing is really uh, critical in today's world when we have so much um, people use this to hurt so many other people. And uh, I think there is an art, an art of letting go and moving forward um, because we can't be our own best person without the art of moving forward. So let's start with person. Who are you, Sylvia? Well, thank you, Kim, for having me. I'm Sylvia O'Connor. I grew up in Louisiana. I am the youngest of five siblings. My moving on journey started when I left my home, southern home in Louisiana after I graduated from high school to seek a better life up north. I grew up in poverty, but I knew I would not remain in poverty. My aunt in her love and care, she assisted me financially and I ended up being the first in my family to graduate from college and high school. And now I'm a very successful person, thankful for my aunt's help. You know what? A couple of things. And Sylvia, you are the third woman I've talked to this year. And so there, there must be something really within what you're talking about because, um, and forgive me, folks. I, the terms, everything shifts all the time. I'm going to say black woman, but you're the third black woman I've spoken to this year alone that has come on my podcast and talked about moving from the Southern United States to the Northern United States. And actually you're the second, you're Michigan. Is that correct? Yes. I moved to Michigan. You're the second woman in Michigan I've talked to. And wow. what's crazy is the other gal, uh, has her uh, doctorate's degree. She's a university pr professor herself. So, like, we're talking, these are incredibly smart women. The one gal, she speaks four languages, grew up in poverty, and knew that she was limited and she sought other options. I'd like to actually, before we dive into what you do, I'd like to actually dive into why you did that, like beyond the knowing that there's opportunity, what were the seeds that showed you? Because remember, these are the breadcrumbs we, we follow. People look for people who have been successful. What are the breadcrumbs? What was the thought process that you knew that you were meant for more? I just knew that I would not remain in poverty. My aunt would come and visit us every year and she would ask us, all of the siblings, to move to Michigan, she said it was such better opportunities. None of them wanted to do it. And I had to move out of my comfort zone. And that's what made me realize in order to do something better, sometimes you just have to move out of your comfort zone. I left my family, my friends to move to a whole new place, cold weather and everything. And it was the best move of my life. 
I get that. I went from Vegas to Canada. I get it. <laughs> cold weather. <laughs> yeah. I tell you though, cold weather when you hit to be a woman of a certain age, I look far better layered than yeah. I'm beginning now. <laughs> I'm doing everybody a favor. Yes. So I understand that knowing that you're you're not destined to stay in poverty. I myself grew up. I'm from a trailer park in Kansas. I uh, did the typical, got pregnant when I was a teen, you know, um, got married as a teenager, you know, did all the very typical things that you see when you're, when you're living just day to day, when you don't yes. see a fear. Yes. It's very easy when you're living day to day and you're living in fear to also be angry. And you talk about the art of moving on, which means that anger has to be released. Let's talk a little bit about what you do, because this is, this was, you already knew that you were destined for something better, but how did you know that you could let all of the, kind of the, the fact, I don't know about you, but sometimes I do feel a little sad that I had to leave my family and I had to leave the Thanksgiving dinners and I had to leave all that in order to have a better life. You know, sometimes I do feel a little sad about that, but how do you, how do you move on? Let's talk about that. I felt sad, but I knew that my aunt was willing to help me and I had to let go of my friends back home. I had to adjust to a new life and I enrolled in college, met lots of friends. She would constantly encourage me. The only way people are gonna know you're different is they're gonna hear your accent. So she worked with me, uh, bought me clothes, because again, I didn't have much. My mother and father couldn't contribute much to helping me. So just knowing there was something better out there, I grew up receiving handouts. And one day I knew that I would be able to give back to those people that helped us, giving us food, um, just encouraging us. And I wanted to one day to say that, you know what, I made it out and I'm gonna help someone else make it out. So how do you help people today? I help people financially. Um, some of the organizations that helped us, one in particular was the Doll and Toy Fund. I remember them always giving us toys at Christmas. So I support organizations like that, Dress for Success, anything to build people up, especially women that may just feel they don't have a way out. But just like me, you have to keep the faith. Faith is something that you don't actually see, but you believe. So I'm just all about encouraging people. Don't let their past determine their future. That is the story of resilience. Knowing that your past does not dictate your future. You are driving the bus. You can make it happen. So let's let's go dive a little bit here into the discussing the art of moving on and uh, you as a public speaker, you know, after 30 years as in a business, in a corporation, in a structure, now you're 100% on your own. It's like it, you're at sink or swim, right? There yeah. is no system. There is nothing. And this is, we're seeing a lot of women move in this direction. A lot of women over 40 are not going back to corporate world. They went back. <laughs> now we're in the second round of what we call the resignation generation, right? So talk to me a little bit around your mindset and how you decided to step fully into you're speaking and, and being an entrepreneur because that's what you're doing and, and how you decided what your niche is, what you're talking about. I had to make a decision. I, as you stated, I had been in health information, mainly a biller, coder, uh, adjunct instructor, uh, Medicare auditor. And I just felt I was at a dead end that I was stagnant. I couldn't go any further, had applied for several jobs, but instead of, you know, letting that job determine my future, how much I make, uh, everybody was talking about the great resignation. I had a great revelation that, you know what, you have to make something happen. So I just decided to uh, turn in my resignation. It wasn't as bad as I thought. 
it's like, you know, you, you don't like this job, you know, it, it was good in the past, but you need to do something new. And I just stepped out on faith and turned in my resignation and stuck with it. It's been six months and I haven't turned back yet. I'm just preparing for my next chapter in life. And you have to be bold and believe in yourself. So let's walk a little bit on the journey then, because a lot of women are in their first week of the journey of where you're at over the six months. So by the way, can anybody guess what Sylvia's favorite color is? I just got to guess it's purple, isn't it? The, yes. the color of royalty and royalty. queens. That's awesome. Yes. That's yes. awesome. Um, can you guess what my favorite color is? Is it red? Pink. Pretty close. Pink. Pretty close. All right. Yes. I'm in a the pink family. Girl. I like yes. my pink. Yes. Okay. So let's let's talk about that first 30 days, right? Public speaker speaking on the art of moving on. So talk about the first 30 days. What did you put in place to establish this path? I started retooling myself and I know I always wanted to be a speaker because usually when people that really know me, when I call them, they'll say, oh, well, let me put my, let me go turn my pot off. So I really just started training myself. That's how I met you at the National Publicity Summit. I just started, you know, uh, reaching out to people that's been where I want to go. And, you know, I have several coaches now and really just training, you know, training is good. You can't just step out there without any experience. So I just started speaking and, you know, just keeping the faith and looking forward, not thinking about that job, just releasing myself from it and working on my new career fearlessly into the next chapter of my life. What is it that you think you offer that's different or unique to you? I've been where a lot of people still are. You're uncomfortable. You feel like you're at a dead end, but you're afraid. I was afraid. Oh, you know, I, you know, at least when I was there, I had a paycheck, I had health insurance, but I had to step out. And, you know, I have a paycheck. I mean, I'm paying myself <laughs> and I still have health insurance. It's not as bad as I thought. You know, I was financially able to you know, take care of myself and just, you know, keep the faith. Things will get better. What was your first speaking gig? My first speaking gig was with Steve Harrison. Uh, actually, it was John Maxwell. And it was a three-minute speech on moving on and how to get unstuck. And how did that feel? Like, walk me through that, that three-minute speech. I want to know a little bit more about it. And do you it, remember it? Yes, it was. It was about being in healthcare for so many years and just felt that I was at a dead end, that I wanted to leave and was afraid to leave. And then I realized I read a quote that, uh, you know, about failure. Uh, failure is a part of life, but getting up and moving on is what you must do. And that encouraged me. And a scripture came to mind that... Uh, you know, God said he would do a new thing. And to order, in order to get something new done, you kind of have to just get past what happened in the past. You know, I was kind of angry about some things and it's like, no, you know, it's just time to move on, let it go. And so that's how I developed my platform. Let it go, don't hold any anger, look for something new and just move on from there. So you're... I'm guessing you and I are pretty much in the same kind of age range. And I know that a lot of this is this kind of revelation space, right? We, I love how you said that a revelation versus a resignation. Right. And we, what do you think is the opportunity that you have for women who are 20 and 30 years younger than us? What is a legacy you want to leave? And how do you think you can help them? I would say believe in yourself. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll just say things or quote things, but we really don't believe them. 
uh, just uh, listen to someone. I listened to my aunt. I she was willing to help me. So just believe in yourself. Uh, listen to those, especially those that have been where you're trying to go, and just keep the faith. Uh, everyone want overnight success, but su success is usually not overnight. You just have to be patient and keep believing in yourself, surrounding yourself around positive people, and you can make it. You know, it's it is interesting. Why do you why do you think now is the time for you? Why now? Again, I felt that I was at a dead end. I was unhappy. I knew there was something better out there, and I was able to pursue my passion. Uh, people that really don't know me, you know, they they think I'm quiet and reserved. But my real friends, they just always say, "You have so much to say, and you always put me on the right path." But that comes by listening to people and just my experience in life, uh, stepping out from Louisiana, moving to Michigan, and actually I moved back to Louisiana. You never know what's on the other side of moving on. Uh, that's what I have to say. And I moved back here, got married for the first time over age 50. So it, don't give up on whatever it is you want. You never know what's on the other side of moving on. Uh, you have me. I've been, <laughs> I've done 30 years in the institution of marriage. Let me tell you, my husband and I go, I think we need to start a podcast. Our, all our friends jokingly call us queen of resilience and king of regret. <laughs> so we're sitting here. We're sitting, would you listen to that podcast, Sylvia? If I started oh. a podcast, old oh, married yes. couple. <laughs> yes. You well, know, folks, I, what's the one when you, when you're really overwhelmed, when things are scary, when you wake up one day and something doesn't come together, because folks, things don't always come together. You best laid plans, right? Yes. How do you get through that? Like, where do you draw from? I draw from my faith in God that, you know, um, again, that I've been through worst things. And he always brought me through. I just kept the faith, uh, surrounding myself around positive people, not giving up. Uh, like I say, people would say, you know, it's hard to get married when you get older, but you never know. I moved here. I met my husband at church. So you can have what you want in life. Don't listen to the naysayers. Just keep doing you and believing in what you want and working at it, you know work at it. That's yes. the key. That's the yes. key. Um, yes. I'm doing some statistics around real estate. I have 22 years in real estate background and then television production and such and, and doing some interesting stats. And, and they say that, you know, the, that the average person makes, you know, 50, less than 50,000 a year in real estate, but they're working maybe 30 hours a week. And that's what they're, they're, they're saying they work 30 hours a week. So you and I both know they're probably doing yeah. 20 at the most. Yeah. Getting up and working for yourself versus knowing that somebody's going to crack the whip. What's that like for you being in your own working for yourself? What's your greatest challenge in working for yourself? Well, um, you may not have the stability of the income, but still you're your own boss. You don't have to wait for evaluation time that you may get a raise. You may not get a raise. Uh, you, you're calling the shots. You know, um, I can go as high as I want as long as I work hard and put myself out there. No one said it would be easy, but it can be done. It's a lot of people have gone before me. So just stick with it. That's the key thing. Sticking with it. Sticking yes. with it. This Thanksgiving, yes. let's talk real quick. Thanksgiving is going to be a tough one for a lot of families who are coming out of that COVID hate funnel of do I or don't I, vaccine or no vaccine, who believes in this, who believes in that. Let's talk about what, give me uh, one strategy of family sitting down this Thanksgiving that has had dissidents through Facebook. What can they apply within their dinner conversation to move forward? That's a hard one, eh? I'm putting you on the spot, aren't I, Sylvia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
would just say, be thankful. Things could be much worse. I have so many friends that, you know, for the vaccine, against the vaccine. I have friends that had COVID for five weeks was in the hospital. We have something to be thankful for. I didn't get COVID. Uh, none of my family members got COVID. So be thankful. Think about the good things you have instead of things that you don't have and all of the chaos going on in the world. It could be worse. Absolutely. So, yes. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Being thankful because isn't that what Thanksgiving's about? Yes. I yes. 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 Uh, and you know, I, I, uh, I'm type person, uh, uh, I love family dinners and any excuse to kind of get together. So, uh, being super grateful this year that, you know, we've had, I know that in the States they've been open far longer, but the comfortability factor I think is back in full swing of hugging and, yes. and shaking hands and, oh, I miss my hugs. I had, I had, I was like, I was, in, I think I was in touch deficit for a while. Like it was really hard. It was really, I'm a hugger folks. I walk around, I got to touch everything. I am that kid that my mother would always say, Kimberly Joe, look with your eyes, not your hands. Look with your eyes. <laughs> We all know someone like that. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, and if you don't, folks, now you do. Now yes. you do. I still, I still look with my hands. Um, let's talk about resiliency. Uh, I collect stories. I like stories. Uh, I collect. I'm. I'm have this whole thing that I'm collecting stories from amazing women of moments mm -hmm. of resiliency that, that they wouldn't be having this conversation today. And that resiliency is, it could be something that happened last week. You just say, is this really the right path? Like it could be something that happened 30 years ago, but would you share a time of resilience, a specific moment and, and what, what your journey through that moment was? Uh, about two years ago, um, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's and actually, uh, it was something somewhat negative, but actually it was positive because that's when I realized like some of the signs and symptoms are very fatigue and I had my thyroid removed and I just realized, you know what, I can't do that type work anymore. So that was my first step of thinking, you know, you're going to bounce back from this. This is going to be okay. So it was, you know, a major life change for me, but it turned into something positive. I did realize my great re revelation that, you know, just do something that you enjoy doing, um, not worrying about what happened in the past. And that's overall another reason I decided to move on. I need something new, something refreshing, something I can do uh, on my own. You know, if I'm tired, I don't want to do anything. Then I can call the shots instead of worrying about productivity, quality, quantity, and all of that. So I was able to bounce back from that. And you just have to bounce back. You know, life is going to happen, but you can't just wallow in, you know, things that happen to you that you have no control over. I would agree 110% with everything you just said. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and health wise, how are you today? I'm doing great. Feeling much better. Just taking it one day at a time. Awesome. Awesome. And making those days yours. That's yes. what's really cool. Making yes. those days yours. Yes. So let's talk books. Give me your, your top picks and uh, and where are you in the process of writing a book or, you know, what's going on in your world and what are you reading? One of my favorite books is Higher is Calling by Tyler Perry. I can so much identify with him. Keep going to these jobs that I hate, but you're staying for a paycheck. Uh, another one is uh, Dr. Alan Laika, How to Live a Fantastic Life. I'm learning how to do that by living life on my own terms. And my book will be coming out hopefully in the next few months. Nine principles to moving from poverty to prosperity. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. I like that a lot. So, well, you'll have a big you have a big book launch, I'm sure. You seem like the type of person that would love to feed people and have a heck of a celebration. Yes, 
(laughs) (laughs) So when we're moving forward, you know, quotes, we all have a quote or something that we pull upon, right? And that quote typically has a deeper meaning to each of us, right? You know, myself, I always jokingly say, I have a couple first, you know, poverty is a state of mind, not a state of economics. Yes. Um, I have, uh, I'm from Kansas. So of course, you know, you got to throw in a Wizard of Oz quote, Glenda, (laughs) you always had the answers within you. You just had to learn them. Um, What is your quote? What is the quote or the saying that you pull upon when the days are hard? One of mine is, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. Not just saying it and quoting it, do you actually believe it? I always believe that I would one day get out of poverty. One other one is do not concentrate on what could go wrong. Concentrate on what can go right. Concentrate on what can go right. Yes. That is the difference between why me and why not me. Yes. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Finals. Final statements, anything that you'd love to put up there, women looking for leadership in Michigan, women looking for leadership anywhere, how can they get a hold of you? And what would, what is, is kind of the final word you'd like to share with them? Well, my website is coming along fine. I can uh, be reached at sylvia-oconnor.com and A quote I would like to, or just some encouragement I would like to leave with someone, don't give up. You know, who would think at this time I would be quitting my job in midlife? Never think it's the end. You know, if you keep moving on, surround yourself around positive people, you can have anything you say. It's not going to come easy. Just keep at it. Stick with it. Nothing worthwhile comes easy. Right. And the darkest is always before the dawn. This is just a fact, folks. And uh, it is hard. It is hard. But, you know, it's, it's, if the journey doesn't have challenges, it doesn't have memorable moments. Yes. So, uh, and be grateful that we're all here, able to journey together. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, folks, that was Sylvia Connor, our up and coming motivational speaker of how to move on. And remember, you know, uh, it could be a revelation. This Thanksgiving dinner doesn't have to be a resignation. (laughs) Be grateful for what you got. Uh, Lean into those that you love and step into your place of leadership. Because you know what? Without having strong leaders, uh, we don't have we don't have a world that that can grow and move forward. And remember, yes, we all know there's only seven original storylines. Yet there are no two voices alike ever. So be a voice. Speak up. Until next time, I'm Kim Hayden. This is Kim Talks Resilience. If your resiliency is lagging, listen and lean into our resilient community. Be sure to grab your gift at resilientgift.com for our monthly magazine. And until next time, be kind to yourself. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.